we don't intimidate you. I don't like think... a five on one kind of situation right now. Imagine a very a very wide table <laughs> sitting on one side of it. We got two. We got two. Yeah. Three. Look at that. Three. So welcome. Those brave brave souls. Uh, brave souls who have made it through three days of the course and I still have questions and not exhausted. <laughs> We're happy to answer whatever questions you have. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh I have a question with this um, INSAR modeling of your earthquake uh, notebook. Uh, so I did um, experiment with the correct notebook, uh, sorry, earthquake, and it turned out to be some weird. Um, so the main problem is that I don't understand the difference between the coordinate system that happens in ice and kite. So apparently, that I can share my screen so you can yeah. see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, where is my? So this this uh, part that actually specifies how we can plot yeah. our uh, displacement. Um, this is for the whole. Uh, scene right yeah so my whole scene is like this I try to actually increase the correlation but that's another problem that's fine for the uh, water masking thing but um, this one uh, captures a whole scene and then when we plot it out it turns out to be like this um, I changed a few <laughs> x and y uh, to actually capture this bit, which I'm interested in modeling, but it turned out to not uh, follow the same pattern. So I'm not sure what's happening here when mm. it reads these values and in here at the bottom, it actually subtracts the Y values from number of rows and then keep the X values. Um, well, okay. It's back to tra track to the top. So, um, in that scene, I don't think you need to crop it. That would be the first thing you, you want to give a good space around your earthquake. Usually you want to have some part of the far field captured so mm -hmm. that, um, any long wavelength signal is, is present. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing that you have that, mm -hmm. um, if you change something, I would run it again from the top rather than just rerun that cell because it does funny things when you run it more than once. Okay. Yep. Okay. I, because like, we had so that I, demo I actually, in, the, in the course, in the class today, yeah. and I reran it with the same things and it ran fine, but I had to rerun it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I did some, it wasn't always. So I, um, so here, <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Okay, sure. Thank you. So does it mean, so maybe I try with that cropping as well and running from start, maybe that solves a problem. Yeah, um, um, you could crop yeah. out the, the white space basically, but okay. uh, the other thing to, to to look at is that you've used quite an aggressive correlation mask and maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I, I was about to change this value to 0.35 um, to avoid the water area. Yeah. yeah, but then you will probably lose even more of the signal. Mm -hmm. So you run from there all the way through and you will see how much of your interferogram is left. <laughs> yeah. <Not much>. yeah. <laughs> no earthquake. <laughs> the earthquake's gone. That's right. Ooh, problem solved.
yeah no, no more than to do <laughs> no slip zero slip defaults in any location it's yeah so um i saw in the slack i think one of the uh, one of the questions was was around um generating water mask so can we actually generate something because most of the northern part is actually water can we generate something in ice or you as you mentioned it's broken so we can't do this there is a way and I have done it um, and okay. I don't have that notebook anywhere handy, but my student is working on an earthquake on an island and we did mm -hmm. figure out how to use the water body mask mm -hmm. uh, to, um, which is a, which is a, a script that does work mm -hmm. still in ice. Um, yeah. But it, it makes, um, it finds out what's water and what is, what is not. Um, mm -hmm. So it's the inverse of a water mask in a way. It's like a, it's like a land mask, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't crop to the the dimensions of the original image very well. So, like, so I have a notebook that that read that makes one of those crops it using GDAL using GDAL to to but to the dimensions of the original interferogram, adds one <laughs> to the land and yep. um, and all that stuff. Yeah, basically a binary mask zero yeah, and one. That's, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, one question this morning, um, uh, Sim was explaining the extract from ARIA tools. Can we extract the water mask from there and then use it here? Probably so not. Um, and it would not be easy uh, because it, ARIA tools uses 90 meter DEM and by default, um, ICE does not. If, so that's one complication and you have to have it cropped to the same area, the same geographical area right. yep. in order to do the multiplication, which we do to, to, to apply the mask. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you could also, I, I can see from like the, the, the interferogram you have that there could be a frame to the North, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you want to process that and add a little strip mm -hmm. a bit further North. Around because this is just IW3 uh, that captured it. Uh, I can actually use two subsource, maybe. Yeah, at least half of the next frame up mm -hmm. maybe would be useful. Yeah. yeah. But I, it would probably work without it if you just want to make a simple model. Mm -hmm. But around this area that's basically mm, no data, can we just crop it, right? Yeah, so you could try put fifteen hundred for Y max and see what what happens. This would be a good test. You have to start from the beginning, right? Load it in again, and <laughs> well, yeah, works. Yep. You might also yep. chop chop off thirty yeah, five hundred or something. Yeah, the other parts. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. It might be worth I don't know lowering the coherence threshold some maybe to mm -hmm. open to two or point two. It seems a bit sparse. Yeah. The only reason I was thinking of uh, getting rid of water, but yeah, you're uh, like mm -hmm. because increasing it just uh, removes all of the signal. Yep. I will change that one. Thank you. No problem. Great. This looks fun. How's everyone else doing? Okay, may I? You can, yes. yes. So I follow the description in that Google document and and stuck at the point when I have to define the, the model parameters, the top, bottom, and length. Okay. And uh, yeah, can I get an explanation for them again? Sure. So the um there's there is a there is a sort of an active. So the top and bottom of the fault are 
the depth to the top of the, the, the part that moved and the depth to the bottom of the part that moved of the fault. Um, and you could specify, you can have the fault be at the surface, which means a depth of zero, or usually somewhere in the top couple of kilometers, a couple of thousand meters, would be where most faults would surface. Um, and then the, the bottom of the faults usually are for, for large-ish continental earthquakes of the order of 15 kilometers, plus or minus some kilometers. So I would probably start with something that went between two and 15 kilometers or something like that with a few kilometers of, of, um, and, uh, of Sigma, something like that. Um, everything else, what, what were the other parameters you were thinking of or had questions? No, about? those were the, the problematic one, though, of course, X and Y, I just read them from there. Yeah, you look for the, like middle center. Of, the middle yeah. of the deformation pattern. Yeah. And dip and rake. Rake might be complicated. I don't know. Well, I did some, some Google Scholar search and was looking for that earthquake. So I don't know if the numbers so, so you, are correct, but I can start with those. Or you can look it up um, at the USGS. Um, the, the they, If you search for that earthquake on the USGS catalog, there will be a page and there will be, um, there'll be a solution from seismology for that earthquake. And there will be two, there'll be two possible strikes and dips for that earthquake. One of them will align with the, the direction you see in the interferogram, the other one will be perpendicular to it. So it should be clear which one is the one to use. Um, and that will have an estimate of the rake as well that you could start with. And we often do that, actually. That's one of the tricks of the trade. Okay. Thank you. No, no problem. Anybody else got questions? Nekin's having errors with, is that with OS ARIA tools? With the ARIA tools notebook or the ARIA tools something else? That's an interesting error. Uh, sorry, it's actually with ARIA tool notebook and it's after it downloaded the uh, NetCDF files and it went into the part that it tries to generate the HDF5 from them. I have enough space. Yeah, maybe you're I don't running think out that... of the space. No, I actually have a space, and I removed everything that it downloaded already while it, Sam was basically mm, uh, lecturing on on that. So I don't know. <laughs> mm. So step is. It's pretty much um, um, nothing happened during the NetCF down NetCDF download, but then when I'm trying to find the cell that actually it did not. Mm, so after. Um, you list the product and then there's a part that's actually set up time series of stack, download them and mask. That section does the mask and dem, but when it does the extracting on wrap phase coherence, um, generating HDF5, 
it says I can actually, so this is what I get at the start of it. Maybe that's why. So that's the first error that I get. One of the ARIA tools mavens on, on the call have any ideas? So then, yeah, that first error I see, that's a silent warning. It's funny, I, I was in, I've seen that before, but I didn't replicate that on my end for this particular notebook. This is the ARIA TS setup notebook, which is distributed through the course, right? Not through ARIA tools docs. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I what I was I saw this um silent error before in other runs, but not um for this particular notebook. That that's suffice to say that you could ignore that, but in terms of um this other out of memory error, that's not something that um I'm sure um so this error actually keeps showing up at some point during this process, but then the notebook keeps going until that snap kind of, kind of like um, message comes out and it actually closes the Jupyter note, Jupyter lab basically. So but when you restart it, the Jupyter lab restarts and then it opens the same notebook, but um, uh, basically the process stopped as at the same time that it was um, um, it was taken out of that environment. So you're running out of are you running out of space or out of memory? Yeah. Um so this is how um it shows up in my Jupyter Lab bar code. So I does anybody see. else have the similar um uh, problem? So maybe something regarding to the environment or yeah. Yeah, I believe that I have the same problem. Uh, that message about the HDF5 that error detected um, from a long list along the notebook, and at the end, uh, the notebook gets stuck and and then closed. Closes. Uh huh. And and I believe that it is this is because of um, of space. It's a space issue. Yeah, I, I think it's um this it's coincidental this warning message. I think this has to do with one of the modules and the environment being out of date. It's, uh, it's strange I can't replicate it, but that said, it's airing out, I think, because of out of memory issues. This yeah, it's a big wall of warnings I've seen that uh, mm -hmm. uh replicates, but it it's That's right. to an error. Yeah. Just this is stopping on coherence, which actually shouldn't take too much memory, right, Sim? Yeah, no, coherence that should be pretty fast. Um, but I think what's um, I, I think unwrapped phase is first extracted or so. I'm not sure. Uh, um, yeah, no, no, really. I mean, the most one that takes. No, no, no. But I mean, in terms of the order of um, an Arya TS setup, I think it filters by unwrapped phase first, and then it goes to coherence here. Have you, yeah. but um, no, um, I'm not really sure of this out of memory issue. It's strange because Brett and myself weren't able to replicate this. Um, and so it, it are you saying that it succeeds at times? It, and it's not so others, it's, sorry, friends. I was uh, wondering, uh, Negan, you have that problem all the time, or does it succeed? Yes. Up? So I um, I ran once when Sam was running. Um, it actually gave me the same uh, error or snap. And then I ran three times after that that uh, part finished. So um, I even once I actually removed every downloaded NetCDF, uh, cleaned it up, restart my server and ran it again. So starting from scratch actually. But you but, did get it to succeed. No, nothing You, you did not get to get it to succeed. No, no. The last message is that, oh snap. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, may I share my screen to show you the long list of this output message? Sure. Okay. That will be probably more more clear. There you go. So, 
everything goes well for this place. I was calculating the coherence and then got stuck and take me out of the notebook and I wasn't able to to run this step. To oh, close so the water mask with the layer. Water mask. Yes. But but this this error is not normal. Oh. What can you say about this message? And it's a long, long list, as you can see. Yeah. Wow. When I tested it out, I didn't see it here. I did see this in the past, I think, with an outdated, uh, what is it, uh, X array driver. I'll paste the relevant uh, thread in the chat here. But um, I don't know if the team could advise, but is there any changes to the environment in the past uh, couple of days in their scope in SAR shell script or so? Um, I wonder if it's one of the underlying dependencies, which is leading to these. These are warnings, by the way, that they're not leading to crashes, but at the same time, yeah, it's really cumbersome. It's like a giant wall of text. Um, I don't think there was any changes in the environment since recently, but we could check. Um, yeah, As you said, saying... the rough face finished. It's just stuck yeah. on the coherence. Even the water master is downloaded. Yeah, it's this weird um, air with coherence. It's strange. Um, but in the fact that it crashes after that, um, I think that has to do with the memory issue. Because again, these this is just... Yeah wall of warnings um which doesn't have implications on the memory itself it has to do with some outdated driver um the excellent driver so i mean maybe excellent. the workaround so, uh, solution could be when you do the aria ts setup first to remove all the files from the coherence folder and then when you do aria ts setup then maybe just select the layers that are missing so that you skip the ones that has been already extracted yeah. in that sense you can kind of restart the processing but without repeating the some steps mm -hmm. hmm. okay let's see what happened Sorry, I didn't understand what we should do now. Um, I mean, maybe the good uh, way to go around this problem, and there is there also looks some message. I haven't seen this message before, but it looks like also the GDAL cannot open virtual file. Yeah, so the workaround solution to check if it will work will be to delete all the files from the coherence folder that has been created by the ARIA tools. That's the one that actually has the all the extracted products, and then run the ARIA TS setup by selecting the layers that are missing, which would be coherence, image uh, incidence angle, azimuth angle, and perpendicular uh, baseline. Yeah, and I think there is the the option for that is is L like a layers. So I will, I will kind of like suggest to try with that one. So maybe that will not use all the memory before if there is some memory leak or something like that. Sure. Thank you. Do you want to give us like a dummy command to use? Yeah, I would. I yeah, let me try to dig it. Sim, do you have it maybe open the terminal? Um, yeah, but um, what you're suggesting then, Marin, is to then just uh run maybe aria extract separately to populate the coherence files, or so, or I'm not sure I, I'm completely understanding. It's it's just to use the aria ts setup, mm -hmm. uh, and this keep the the unwrap phase because at the moment aria ts setup doesn't recognize already extracted uh products so sometimes if there is a corrupted file let's say extracted and it tries to overrun it that might also report some error um let me see 
Yeah, but yeah, but by default, RETS setup is going to try to regenerate all those layers. Um, so that said, actually, could you could you both do an LS of your workspace inside of RETS setup output and just tell me what you see there? Because um, I'll just show you what I have on my end. I'll try to paste it into the chat. Um, it should reflect this. That's to say you should be able to proceed with the plotting and LS of the stack BRT after that. Everything should be generated um, because that's a silent warning, an annoying but silent warning. Someone who tried to uh, end up the... Okay. So yeah, the text is kind of small. Let me try to make it a bit bigger. Actually, let me just go ahead and share my screen there so I can try to explain. Um, yeah. So this is what I see on my end. There's an you know, azimuth angle, a V perp coherence. Everything is there. Um, and that's what happens when I LS inside of coherence. And there should be a stack subdirectory. So could you confirm whether or not that stack subdirectory exists with those constituent D or T files? Because if they do, you could proceed with the plotting. Which of these um, subdirectories trees are missing on your end? I cannot see any stack subfolder, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I can see coherence uh, and others like products mask them. Okay. Um, and even on wrapped face. I think it makes the stack folder at the very end. So if it didn't complete all the yes. processing, then it won't have the stack folder. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, I think that's the bottom right there. I think it just somehow crashed in the coherence because of uh, some memory issue. But the thing is, at least uh, what I see is the products that I had staged, um, there's 5.3 gigabytes of them. Um, could you confirm if you do a DUSH of the products, if you also see this? Because um, it's very bizarre, I can't replicate it. I think Ignacio was showing you was trying to uh, run it on 600 products. 600. Um, yeah, that, that's probably going to run out of space. Yeah, that's weird how we got 600 products. There's 86. Um, and you preceded with the default where, right, it, with the stage data, correct? The stage data is a 32 gigabyte file that contains, as far as I can tell, 595 files. Ah, so it is. 595 in the in the stage data. Oh, huh. that's um, very bizarre. Yeah, on my end, um, it shows up as 5.7. It's the RIT setup that's it, uh, 4.7. Um, that is something we had updated um, late last week um, between Alex and Eric uh, Mandel. But um, it's very bizarre. Um, I wonder if um, somehow the, yeah, it looks like clearly the stage data hadn't been updated as intended. Um, let me try to manually take one of these paths. So here, okay. Um, sorry, I just, I just want to mention that in my products uh, directory, I have 37 gigabytes. Hmm. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. For me, I only have four four point seven, but um, well, that's going to take a little while here. 
So yeah, so maybe you're running out of the memory. Oh, okay, 32 gigabytes, yeah. Huh. Okay, and that's the first... Uh... <laughs> that sounds like a problem. <laughs> yeah, this is very bizarre because I had to perform this as a sanity check between uh, Brad and Ed Lindell late last week, but it looks like it's using this legacy sort of corrupted stage data. I think that's the kind of origin of this out of memory error and 32 gigabytes, it's way more than uh, obviously we intend, but then there's this second link, ah, okay. So I think I may have found a workaround, but it's fairly confusing. So it looks like this, um, there's two ways to access the stage data. The stage data here is what we intend. It's only 4.7 gigabytes that had been updated. But this um, AWS path, um, this had not been updated for, for whatever reason. So here's what I propose. I'll put this in the chat. Um, this should work if you go ahead and um, retry. So that's a notebook update that we need to do. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, I think the easiest thing would be for me to perhaps push that to the repo, but at the same time, I'll provide the pack to you all here. This, of course, necess necessitates you uh, cleaning up your work directory and starting from scratch, but it should go a lot faster. So, sorry, bear with me. You see in this prep cell, um, just go ahead. And I don't know the best way to, I'll put this actually in the Slack chat. I think it's going to be easier to take. So this um, community Slack, uh, I put the little snippets. And what you're going to do is you're going to replace prep A with that part. The, uh, I know I kind of went through a lot there, but does that make sense? Um, because it, like I said, there's two uh, repos for the stage data. One of them appears to be corrupted. The other one seems to be okay. It's 4.6 gigabytes. Um, so I would go ahead and try that. And uh, on the side, I'll go ahead and update the notebooks themselves and push that as a commit um, to remove that reference to the other um, stage data link. So yeah, please try that out. Yeah, and we can update the notebook on GitHub. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to work on that uh, down on the side here, but the, it's going to be a, an easy path with that. It is okay if I delete the area TS setup output folder uh, before running again? Yes, please. Yes. I advise you You all do that. I advise you go ahead and delete uh, um, output perfect. there and then rerun uh, with that change I suggested for prep A, then it should work. Um, but yeah, yeah, it just looks yeah. like these two repos weren't up there. We don't want it anymore. Okay, thanks, thanks. Mm -hmm. The questions. I have one more question. 
and now Franz, you're here. Uh, I actually um, we we discussed something around H hype three actually, um, and the one that we use on demand it's based on gamma processing software, right? Uh, if we want to use like, for instance, we have a stack of time series came out of Hype 3. And if we want to use Mintpy, for instance, do we need to actually convert it to ICE format? No, there is uh, tools available now. And there are actually notebooks probably on your um, deployment right now that work plug and play with the um, the Hype um, outputs. Sure. In fact, Thank one you. of the people that Forrest Williams, who you may have seen off and on show up uh, in the morning office hours and during the lectures, one of the reasons why we hired him is because when he was a graduate student, he wrote an updated MinPy to work with with hype outputs. So he community contributed all of the code, and we noticed him, and then ended up hiring him. Perfect. Yeah, Thank so you. it should it should work. There are tools available uh, to um, let you work directly with hype outputs. I think there's a, you can import, there's an, um, instead of importing ice, there's a flag you can set that says import hype. As far as I recall. In the MinPy, um, the uh, sort of text file that you're using to run the, to run MinPy, there's a, an option there where you set the, the input processor. So most of it should work plug and play. One of the things that doesn't work necessarily is um, the um, the gamma phase unwrapping approach. Is, it's also a minimum cost flow approach similar to Snafu, but it doesn't provide uh, connected component uh, information. So some of the unwrapping error correction um, concepts that Yunjun is going to talk to you about on Friday um, won't work with the hype data because the connected components are not there. There's one of the methods that that he's going to show you uh, that requires a uh, connected component map. Bridging, right? Yep. Has anyone tried to write a, a wrapper for um, Lix interferograms? I feel like I should do it, but I can't be, I, I'm late. I'm fundamentally lazy. For which of the ferrograms? Lix, uh, which oh. is the... The Comet people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're very similar to, to hype interferograms, I suspect, the geotiffs. Mm -hmm. I, I they also some... use gamma, I believe. That's right. Maybe they work with the hype inputs. Yeah, I've been meaning to try it. Maybe that's something I will do for my homework. I, I think I saw some discussion on it, and Jun Jun just welcomed the contributions on that part. Well, I, I understand so that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I've, I've contributed to ICE now and stamps, so <laughs> maybe it's my turn to contribute to Mint Pie. Okay, it looks like the ARIA tools works now. Yeah, I'm still working to uh, issue that patch, but I'll update everyone once I get that or issue the pull request. Great. Well, that's one uh, problem solved. Cool. You can fill up everyone's hard drives really easily. Catch them. Great. You have 20 more minutes of silence. I'm running. Oh, I'm now. working on that forward model and I'm getting like opposite results compared to the forward model. May I show you? Sure. Mm. Uh, it could be a sign problem. Could be the rake. 
could be all sorts of things. Okay. Do you see the screen? Oh, it's coming. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Add, a, mm -hmm. add 180 degrees getting. to your rake. <laughs> exactly. So, so then what should I, should I put in the, the, in the parameters? Uh, so I think the fourth parameter is the rake. Struct it right. Third parameter. Yeah. So add 180 degrees to that. 180? Yeah. Okay. Now you're Getting in the ballpark. Better. Yeah. yeah. There's probably okay. it's probably not 180 because yeah. Anyway, if you change okay, it I'll... by t 10 or 20 degrees, that blue blob will probably move one way or the other, and you can figure out which one, which way is the way you want to go. Yeah, exactly. Because I've been playing with those first two, and finally figure out the the way the degrees go properly and yeah and now yeah the penalty dropped like eight times so all right i will spend some time to figure out this thank you very much appreciate no problem someone asked about whether you could use aria standard product interferograms in that notebook and i was like oh that would be a thing to do wouldn't it <laughs> write a version that uses an aria interferogram do you have any favorite earthquakes sim marin um the the aria picked up i think the uh, marina nice one was uh turkey right but it was a bit uh, difficult to work with um, not, not turkey not turkey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the elastic earthquake though the same one i showed the I 2020 which press would be a good one to try it out well, can't model it with a single fault though that's the thing yeah yeah, it's curved enough that it won't work well. And what about the seam? What was you got the magnitude six? The name of the the also in California, a little bit north of Monte Cristo. Yeah, maybe that one. That one looks Nevada. That's, yeah. that's not an easy one to model either. Oh, the one. Oh, there you, was... you need a step over, and it's it's, it's gnarly. Uh, I was just about to suggest this one in Tajikistan, but uh, that's a bit complicated too. The uh, Sarah's earthquake? Yeah, the Sarah. Your, yeah. your PhD? Yeah, yeah, part of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's a nice one, but uh, kind of complicated. Um, Is there something somewhere? Mm. <laughs> I'll I'll get back to you on that. I'm just. There was that earthquake in the in the eastern California. That was there was a normal fault from like twenty from last year or maybe the year before it was like a six magnitude six normal fault that might be I can't remember when it was I forget the name of that one it was uh, near um... right on the border right yeah with Nevada. Um... I'll go looking. I think I, I suspect it should all just work, other, apart from having to like tell it where to get the line of sight information from. I mean, maybe the best one would be some of these displacement products in Aria Share for certain earthquakes are produced with the with the same pro processor, so maybe. They can download the uh, cosmic the interferograms there and run the inversion. Yeah, but I, I was thinking half of the thing we just showed you how to ah. grab in these these data and it's like yes, and some of them have earthquakes in. Here we are. Um, I'll have a think about it. Maybe that's another homework project for me. There's the uh, there's a night. Right. Is there Aria uh, Gun W files for Mexico? Because there's been a bunch of those magnitude seven subduction zone quakes. Those are pretty simple. There are some, but um, not sure of the coincidence with those events. But uh, do you think that would be easy to model though if we had it? 
for those deep subduction zone earthquakes. Ish. Uh, that, that's the thing. I mean, it, it's it not won't get a good dip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We think it's worth trying. Of, of course, like, I'm sure Franz is going to say we have the Starview system, which <laughs> makes dozens of co-seismic interferograms. No, I mean, I, there's. do you remember that earthquake on the Alaska North Slope from, I don't know, 2018 now? Uh-huh. Uh, that could be an interesting one. It's kind of not that large. It was like, it's, what was it, a 6.2, I think? But it was unusually large for that region. And I don't think anybody has modeled that a lot yet. We could have, we could crowdsource the whole thing this time next year. Antelope Valley, that's the one. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that, yeah, it looks about, yeah, we could get that in ARIA tools, uh, get the ARIA products for that. Um, it's there. Really was two years ago, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Time flies. I guess we were still stuck at home then, so... I mean, if you know one that it will be like a good um, case study for maybe as now we are testing the new version of the products, maybe we can run over that area and produce. Last time I tried to respond to a pull request, it didn't work. I don't know why that is. But you don't have the privilege? Apparently not. I've responded to some before. That's what's confusing me. But when Eric submitted one yesterday or the day before, I'm leaving like futile comments, <laughs> did nothing. Yeah, you were the one tagged, so you have to approve. Still get all the emails, that's the thing. Can you approve sins? I left a comment. <laughs> that does nothing. I can, I can add myself here. Let's see if that works. I must. Oh, see your field maybe, Okay. Maybe I'll add myself. Is that what I need to do? You already added. No, I just added. No, you're already on the list. Yeah, you're on the list. <laughs> Yeah, it gives me a option to approve the, the change. I'll just approve it. I don't understand yet. Yeah, yeah, sorry for the confusion or so on the ARIA. And uh, looks like we resolved this patch, but uh, it's my impression that it said some things about uh, some warning with some modules or so. I think there's a couple things going on that could be at play, but in the end, it was this stage data, which 
wasn't reflected in both of the repos. So I've made reference to one static repo here with the um, sort of updated stage data and it should work fine. But again, let me know if there's any questions or concerns um, now with the uh, commit merged. You might want to leave a, a more descriptive comment in the Slack. <laughs> Oh, to oh, like yeah. the rest to the, everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, you can let them know to restart their machines. You know, when they restart their server, they they should get an automatically the new version put in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. I'll do that. Yeah, mine is running and it seems to be behaving. Other questions? Let's see, eight more minutes. We need another countdown, probably. <laughs> I don't think I have the energy for a, a countdown from 10 today. I think we can count down from three. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, everybody. See you all tomorrow. All right. Bright and early. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.